So I mentioned beyond the home. So the original premise was in the home, residential service. So a few years ago, we were talking, you know, one to four. The femtocell at that point was sort of one to four users on this little device. Well, now it's greatly expanded, and there's essentially three kind of core categories of femtocell. The residential, the enterprise or, or business, say up to, so residential might be one to eight type of range. Uh, enterprise might be up to 32 type range. And then what's called the metro zone. This is the idea of common areas. So it could be a convention center like this, airport, um, you know, cafe, uh, common square type things. So whereas originally the idea of a femtocell was a closed access list, meaning if I'm the residence owner, you know, it's just for me and my family and here are the, the phone numbers and their, uh, you know, IDs and everything. Well, the whole idea of a metro femtocell is that it's open access. So as long as somebody has uh, service with that operator, then they have access to the femtocell. So this is another way for uh, operators to keep pace with subscribers and their traffic usage, particularly in the high density areas. Self-organizing. So I mentioned the this interference magic uh, management aspect, the intelligence out at the end. The, the term is SON, self-organizing networks, and then it's also being characterized as self-optimizing networks. So not just listening and being sure to deconflict with what's already there, but also recognizing that wireless networks are not static. It's very dynamic. So people move around, time of day, the special events, but then their traffic. If there are certain events that take place, so you know you can imagine uh, in the last month or so the the traffic patterns in uh, in Cairo, Egypt have been you know markedly different than they typically are. Well, if you've got intelligence at the edge of the network that are able to adjust to that and allocate channels to where it's needed, and so all this type of technologies is part of the value proposition of what goes on with the small cells. So I mentioned this, the, the LTE rollouts, one of the uh, approaches, and, and granted, not universally uh, uh, accepted or agreed upon, but the concept of deploying femtos early as part of your, your LTE deployment rather than, so the, tip, tip, the traditional deployment of a network is you start with macro and then you fill in the gaps, whether with additional macro cells or with eco cells or micro cells. The whole idea here is you don't have to have that traditional outside-in deployment. You could have what's this term, the inside-out deployment. You could start with LTE femtocells in your high usage areas and then build out the macro cells uh, more in line with, with investment. So there doesn't have to be the strong mismatch between your investments and your return. So one of the things the Femto Forum has done um, last year is uh, reinvigorated the LTE Special Interest Group. This is actually being led by Alan Law of Vodafone. So I mentioned Vodafone being one of the uh, most progressive uh, operators globally for deploying femtocells and really, in my opinion, getting the right, that they get it in terms of consumer marketing and the value proposition to the, the consumer. Alan is leading the LTE Special Interest Group, which is working with all the ecosystem members within the Femto Forum and with 3GPP and with various operators, educating. It's, it's partially technical work and it's partially be best practices. Looking at the operators around the world, what's worked be what has worked really well in the 3G arena, and then you know, applying that to LTE and figure out what, what's similar, what's different, and how can we leverage this. So in conclusion, there's a strong, uh, compelling business case for femtocells, particularly for LTE. The primary one for operators is offloading traffic from the macro network, delay the costly infrastructure upgrades for your, your macro and your core network elements, push the intelligence out to the edge. It's no, no longer the centrally planned paradigm, but kind of the more um, intelligence at the edge, the more the ad hoc type deployment. You match up your revenue with your cost, you increase the service experience for the subscriber, both higher um, coverage, you know, higher bars of service for better voice quality, higher data rates, and then this potential for new services, which we're only very seeing the beginning of. And so things like, you know, when you enter the Femto zone, your, your applications change, maybe tariffs change. So for example, you enter your home zone, lights could come on, the heat or air conditioning could kick on, uh, those sorts of things. Notification services for um, 
young subscribers or elderly, all sorts of things, and we're only just beginning to see the tip of it. So operators are deploying these. Uh, and Femtoform is, is really leading the charge. Oops, excuse me. Uh, leading the charge in, uh, in, in femtocell deployment. So that basically is the high level overview of, uh, of femtocells and LTE, and I'd be happy to, uh, to take any questions. Yes, sir. Do you have any white paper to show, the, uh, to show, to convince one that uh, it's easier for a service provider to implement the femtocell design? Oh, sure. The so question about white paper for um, basically the business case or convincing operators to deploy femto cells. Yes, there is. In fact, uh, I mentioned this, uh, this business case tool from Signals Research Group. This, uh, the, the tool, if you can imagine, like a lot of dials, a lot of things that one can adjust. There's also a corresponding white paper that goes with that tool. And um, I believe that's available on the FEMTO Forum website. I can check with my colleague back there. But yeah, FEMTO Forum website actually has a tremendous library of resources available for not just the technology, but more importantly, the business case. And then um, some white papers on services that are expected to, to be developed. FEMTO SOs are real, they're, they're deployed out there. Um, so there's no question about the technology. Um, there are still debates about the business case and which one is most effective, not whether it's positive or negative, but rather which one is most optimal. And then the services is kind of the last category where there's um, still much work to be done. And that's not so much a Femto Forum led effort, it really most likely will be the, the developer community. Just like we've seen apps on mobile devices, it's not really driven by the operators so much, but they, they create the APIs and the platform and then the developers have at it. And we think it's gonna be very similar and FEPTOform is working to create uh, basically services API, so standard interfaces, so the developer community can have at it and, and create home zone or, or enterprise zone type services. So, any other questions? Sure. Do you need another spectrum to offer them to sell for it, the same spectrum the operator has, only a reduced power to make it? Great question. Basically, do you need a new spectrum, additional spectrum to offer femto cells? And the short answer is no, absolutely not. It's the same spectrum. Um, there, there is an argument to be made for, for particularly for LTE. Uh, some have put forward the proposition that uh, one, the operator should use FDD spectrum for macro deployment and TDD spectrum for, uh, for small cell or femto deployment. The idea being you take your unpaired spectrum for all these kind of ad hoc deployments where the subscribers are, are plugging them in and turning it up and use your FDD, your paired spectrum for the macro coverage. That, that's certainly one approach and, and one that my company happens to agree with, but it's not a requirement and it's different operators different uh, have different approaches. So short answer is no, you don't need more spectrum. If you have certain types of spectrum available, you can, you can segregate for ease of um, management and, and things of that nature, but it's, it's not required. So, okay, well, my time is up. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate the, uh, the interaction and uh, uh, femtoforum.org for white papers on, uh, on all things femtocell and, and LTE femtocell. Thank you.